To continue the journey of color grading and the retouching series, today we're going to take a look at solid color adjustment layers. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. So to continue this journey of color grading, we're going to look at a very easy to use adjustment layer in Photoshop, which are solid color adjustment layers. And this is going to put to the test some of the things we've talked about in the previous videos of color grading on the channel, where we've talked about using the color wheel and being able to use a discerning artistic eye of what colors we can work into a scene and how to use solid color adjustment layers and layer blending modes to make them interact with the image to produce the desired results. Before we dive into Photoshop, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by. If you like the content you find in this video and tutorial today, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. New content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTube tubes. Now, let's dive into the Photoshop and begin the journey of solid color adjustment. So to get started with solid color adjustment layers, we need to make the most important decision for this artwork, which is what colors are we actually going to use? So if we look at the image for inspiration, there are technically three colors into this scene. There's the red, yellows, and oranges that are in her human skin tone, and then there's the navy blue of her sweater, and then there's the gray paper behind. But really, we have the two colors of red, yellow, orange in her skin, and then the blue of the sweater. We are color grading this image. We're creating artwork on top of it. So we need to pay respect to the existing colors. We can work against them by using compliments to them, but ultimately adding a color into this scene that ties into the existing colors is a great foundation to start from. So if we know we're going to use the navy blue from the sweater, let's go to the color wheel. The blue is on this side of the wheel. We can use the complement, which is orange because it's opposite of blue. We talked about that in the previous videos. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen the previous videos on color grading or any of the other videos in the retouching series, take a look at the card above at the end of this video, go to that card. It'll take you to the beginning of the retouching series and you can get started uh, with all of that. So ultimately we can use those complements and the orange and yellows are already there, but we can also use existing colors that are nearby to the blue. We don't necessarily always have to use the complement if you want to use the green that's on the opposite side or the purples you can it's experimentation color theory and color harmony it's a vast subject to understand and it takes a lot of time and I don't truly fully understand it I've spent some time trying to learn it but it's about experimentation understanding some of those core principles and foundations of color harmony and color theory so Let's get started making some solid color adjustment layers and we'll start working with the image and uh, go through the process of experimentation. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment window icon here in the layers window and click it. At the top is solid color. We'll click that. It will make the adjustment layer here at the top of the layers window and then it pulls up the color picker and it asks, asks us to pick a color. So let's go ahead and choose a navy blue. I'm going to bring it to like right about there and then I'm going to choose a deeper, not as bright tone of blue. And the brightness, by the way, is set here. So B for brightness and we're at 46%. If I take this to 50, we're at an even 50% of brightness for this hue and saturation of blue or where we selected it right here. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, since this is at the top of the layer stack, this has covered our entire image with blue. We can no longer see the model because the layers blending mode is set to normal. So it's in a normal view. We need to tell Photoshop to have this adjustment layer interact with the model in a different way so we can see it or all the layers below. So I'm going to click this window, which brings up all the blending modes. Now we've talked about this in a previous video, but just to quickly recap, all the blending modes pretty much do what their namesake is from the first one in the list. So all of these here, dark and multiply color burn, linear burn and darker color, they all pretty much make the image darker as you can see on the screen. If we do lighten, it makes and lighten screen color dodge, all of these, they make the image brighter. Overlay in these, I don't know what it does. I'm not an engineer, I'm an artist. So anyway, I'm gonna come back up to lighten because that's what I want to do. And instantaneously with this one adjustment layer, choosing a native color from the scene, changing the blending mode to lighten, we have created a nice effect to the scene. And because it's blue and the complement to blue is orange and orange is in her skin tone, we have created a harmony existing just with the image and one color adjustment layer. 
So again, color grading, as I've said in previous videos, it is a simple thing to do, but it is a complex art form to master in Photoshop. And the only way you're going to do that is to continue to learn why things work in Photoshop, the different tools at your disposal, color theory, color harmony, and experimentation. And just creating styles that you like, color combinations that you like, tools and techniques that you like, and building that together. So let's go ahead and add another color into the scene. So if we come back to the color wheel, we know we have blue. Let's go ahead and drift into the purples. It's right next door. And I blue is my favorite color. It's the Pantone color of the year for 2020. And purple is kind of my next pseudo favorite color, like that magenta purple I'm a big fan of. So I'm going to come down to the adjustment window icon here, come up to solid color. Let's choose a color of purple. And uh, that one's pretty good. Now, I don't wanna choose a bright color up here. I'm gonna choose that 50% color again because we know since we're changing the adjustment layers blending mode to lighten, that it's going to make everything brighter or lighten it with the color. If we choose an already bright version of the color, it's going to make it even that much more brighter. I don't necessarily want that because this image is a dramatically lit portrait. So with the color grade, I don't want to work against the lighting that was used during the photography. So I'm going to choose this purple. We're at 51%. That's fine and hit OK. Now I need to change the blending mode to lighten. And now these two are working in conjunction with each other. And they are so close to each other on the color wheel that in a way, I'm using this word knowingly, it's creating a harmony to a degree because they're working with each other because they're right next to each other on the color wheel. So if I turn it off and on, we can see the overall effect. And again, it's working with that third color that's already in the scene, which is the orange and yellows and reds in her skin tone itself. Now, Let's go ahead and add one third adjustment layer to this solid color. Let's choose an orange color. Uh, let's go just right about there and then we'll pick that neutral dark tone. 57% uh, is fine, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and change it to lighten. Now we have this weird like mauve effect because all three of these colors right now are interacting with each other, blending down because we've changed them to lighten. So we need to do a couple of things here and, and there's options to explore. And again, this is based upon your style, your image and what you're looking to achieve. Right now we can't see her body anymore, nor the paper. So it looks like a disembodied head and disembodied hands, which if that's what you're going for, congratulations, but that looks creepy to me. It looks like she's some kind of like bubble gum ghost or whatever. So. I want to change how they interact with each other. There's a couple of ways to do this. Right now, the layers, all three of them, their opacity and fill is set to 100%. So we're seeing 100% effect of each one of these. So if I were to, let's start with the orange one. If I were to change the opacity of this and bring it down to 25%, 26 is fine. It's still there because if I turn it on and off to do a before and after, we can see a noticeable difference in the scene but it's less of an interaction with it because we lowered the opacity. Let's take the purple one and bring the opacity down to like 65%. Turn it off and on, it's still affecting it, but now with the orange at the lowest opacity, the purple one at the next lowest, and then the blue one at full, we have an interesting blend of purple into the scene. We can change it up. We can say that the purple one, let's bring that one all the way down. Let's take that one to 15%. Let's take the orange one back up to like 50%. We have the purple. What if we were to take the blue, the original one, and bring it down in opacity? Now we're getting more into that mauve because the, the orange and the purple are interacting with each other more strongly because of the opacity levels than blue to a degree, if that makes sense. The blue is still there and it's still building a base to it. Without it, it's arguably more in that orange purple family and the blue is bringing it more into mauve and purples. So we're letting colors interact and work with each other by building three different adjustment layers, solid color adjustment layers, changing the blending mode to lighten and then changing the opacity and reducing it to let one of them be more prominent than the other. But we have a couple of other things we can explore as well. We can also use the existing layer masks that come with the adjustment layers themselves. Right now they are white masks or reveal all masks. So the entire effect is being seen. If we were to start painting black onto this with our brush, then we can start taking it away in certain key areas. So I'm going to hit B for brush. I'm going to make sure that my foreground color is set to black. 
My brush is set to opacity of 100%. I'm going to change the flow of my brush by hitting the shift key and the number one key on my keyboard, and it's going to change it to 10%. Now, if I start painting black onto this mask in certain key areas, let's start with her face. I'm going to start taking the blue away. I'm taking it away from the shadows on her face and so forth because again this is a two light setup this is a rembrandt lighting pattern to a degree because we have one strong light source that is on camera left coming into the scene we have a second light source that is off camera right and behind the model so it's barely coming into the scene and hitting this side of her face we have the triangle of light on this side of her face which is indicative of rembrandt lighting so if i start taking this blue away in certain key areas i can start affecting how these color adjustment layers are coming into the scene. And as you can see, it's a question of using, you know, I use a Wacom Intuos Pro pen. I highly recommend using a pen tablet. I've always used Wacom, they've never let me down. But I using a pen, you get the freedom and control of an artist to be able to paint it into the scene very selectively and letting your eyes just kind of decide where it needs to go and where you want it to take effect. You can do very meticulous work and ultimately, go back in and start painting it very carefully just in those shadows. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and start painting black onto this mask just in certain key areas like this into the shadows themselves just to take it away strategically. This is a part of color grading. We're choosing to take the colors out of the shadows so that other color harmony of the purple and orange will come through in those shadows themselves. But I'm gonna go ahead and fill this mask right now with white so it will undo all of the brush strokes that I just did. So I'm making sure that my foreground color is set to white and while the mask is selected, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and hit the backspace key and that will fill the mask with white so everything that I just brushed in is now undone, so to speak. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command on the number zero to zoom all the way back out. Let's experiment with blending modes because I've said this in previous videos, I say this all the time when I teach, to me, layer blending modes are the most powerful element of Photoshop, and they've been with Photoshop since the beginning of time. So I highly recommend that you explore different blending modes. So let's go ahead and let's bring all of these back up to an opacity of 100%. So we can see the full effect of each one of these, and we get back to that bubblegum disembodied ghost that's coming after you because you chew too much sugary chewing gum. So now let's change one of these and change their blending mode. Let's change, um, let's change the orange one. So from lighten, I'm gonna come down to screen. It's making everything a little bit brighter. Again, it's doing its namesake in the lighten family. It's making things brighter. Color dodge, we're getting a very stylized look now because that color is interacting with it. And notice we can see a little bit more of her body now than we could before. So this is like, if you're trying to do some kind of retro ad or whatever, you can hopefully your imagination is starting to take flight here because if you change the blending mode to one of these, start lowering the opacity of the others or even this one, start letting them blend with each other. You're getting a stylized, interesting effect simply because of the blending mode itself and the colors you chose. So if we go on down, Linear Dodge is, is an interesting one, then Lighter Color definitely gives you a weird, funky effect that's going to be creepy and make you wake up in the middle of the night going, no, don't hurt me, Bubblegum Lady, don't hurt me. So I'm going to come down and to Soft Light. Soft Light is one that I typically use all the time in my color grades when I use a solid color adjustment layer. I will use Lighten, I will use Color Dodge, and I use Soft Light a lot. So it's making the image darker. So it's giving us a more dark, dramatic effect. We can see a little bit more of her body, but keep in mind, all of these adjustment layers still have an opacity of 100%. So we have a couple of options. We can start lowering the opacity, or we can go back in and change the color. So if we look at the adjustment layer, uh, the solid color adjustment layer, when the icon is selected with that white little square around it, if I double click, it's gonna bring up the color picker and I can choose a new color. So if I make the color brighter, it's a completely different effect than what it was before. So again, double click it, pick a color, make it brighter, make it even darker, change the orange, go into the greens. Because again, green was on the other side of blue on the color wheel. Now we're starting to get an interesting, like dark moody, like horror film kind of feeling. Again, bubble gum, you thought it was a stick of gum until you started chewing, <laughs> right? 
that would be a really that would be like a sharknado vid and i would never watch that at all it would just depend on who's in it and if it's free on netflix so anyway so if we start going a little bit brighter with the greens we can get some different tones into it and we can also choose a different version of blue even our, though we already have the dark blue if we go into the teals and start working with it again on that blending mode of soft light making things darker we can start playing around and getting a different effect and feeling into the scene let's keep it in this dark tone let's go with this midnight horror bubblegum sharknado netflix crappy movie and now i'm going to change the opacity of this and bring it down just a little bit i'm letting it start interact actually let's take that one back up let's take the dark blue one down just a little bit and see how it yeah so we can start seeing more of her body into the scene now and the purple one we can change the blending mode of this one to color dodge and now it just looks weird if we go to screen Ooh, i like that i like that blend it's a nice soft kind of feeling so part of color grading again recapping is choosing a blending mode Cho first choosing the colors that work with the scene choosing a blending mode changing how the blending or how the layer interacts so is it an opacity change is it the mask change is it a different blending mode but with this i'm liking this overall tone but there's more elements i want into the scene i want something i want it to be darker but i like this tone of blue so what if i were to come and make a new solid color adjustment layer again come down to the window solid color but what if this time i just chose black hit okay change the blending mode so let's go to lighten didn't really do much did it but if we come down to soft light it made it darker again but we still have that color because of the blending mode here of soft light screen and lighten all three of those interacting with these three colors our color palette and then we chose one that is dark so i want to be able to see a little bit more of her but i want the rest of the scene to still have that dark moodiness how would i do it I can change the opacity of this, or I can come to the layer mask and start painting black onto it and start taking it away. I'm hiding the effect of this layer. So if I start painting black right over her, I'm, I'm painting with white right now because my foreground color is set to white. So I need to hit the letter X to switch it. And now if I start painting with black, I'm taking away that effect and I can feather it in and start creating this interesting focused vignette of light. So in a way, a vignette is essentially a darker outer perimeter over your image so that the center is brighter, the outside is darker. It forces the audience to start looking to the center of the image. You can drive the audience's focus with a vignette. And we've created one during the color grading process by using the same tool of an adjustment layer and a blending mode. So when I say to you, you have to learn why things work in Photoshop, and be able to connect those tools to other process or techniques in Photoshop. You know what a solid color adjustment layer does now, you know what the blending modes do now from the purpose of color grading, but you can also use that same tool to be able to create a vignette to drive the audience's focus to your scene. So that pretty much concludes the tutorial. Let's have some final thoughts and finish up the video for today. We're gonna to continue the color grading series because I have a few more tricks up my sleeve that I wanna to show to you to build that tool set of color grading. But we're starting to reach a point where I want you to understand that these are separate techniques that yes, utilized by themselves can produce one result. But the true power of it and the true creativity of color grading is using all of them or a lot of them combined with each other. This that we just saw by using one adjustment layer, but choosing colors and blending modes, opacities and masks, we are fluctuating the control of it. We are using our artistic eye to decide how it interacts into the scene, how it augments the artwork and ultimately produces the image and the art and the style that speaks to us and hopefully speaks to the audience that's watching our work. So we'll continue the color grading series, but I want you to start experimenting. Use an adjustment, solid color adjustment layer in conjunction with split toning. Use a solid color adjustment layer in conjunction with color balance and see how these things can work. See how you can use color balance above in the layer stack of a solid color adjustment layer to start balancing the color that you just chose with the solid color adjustment layer, even though you can change the color because it's a solid color adjustment layer. This is the process of Photoshop. This is the process of art. This is the process that can be frightening when you start with it because you can start playing around and before you've turned around twice, it's a hot mess and you just don't want to do it anymore. You didn't do anything wrong. You're experimenting. That's how you will learn. 
Write down your process. Make an action as you go. Record yourself doing it. When I started, I used to write down everything I did. Solid color adjustment layer that looks like horror bubble gum attacking you at 50%. And then I would write the next thing so I could remember and start creating my style. Experimentation is key. Go on the journey and you will not be disappointed in what you eventually can create as you continue to develop your style. If you like the content you found in the tutorial today, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing. There is new content coming in photography education because I'm now finally able to get back into the studio and start photographing. And I'll be recording content for this channel based upon uh, the gear that I use, the lighting patterns I use, how I work with models and so forth. So make sure you subscribe. And when you do hit the bell icon, so you'll be notified of that content when you return to the YouTubes. Thank you so much for your support. And until next time, I will see you out there in the world of Photoshop.